In the Galapagos Islands, there's a couple of species of tree finch and a species of fly, and together they have a pretty grim relationship. The exact nature of this relationship and the consequences of it have recently been studied and analyzed and written into a scientific paper that's been published in the Proceedings of the Royal Society B. So, the finches have a famous evolutionary history surrounding the Galapagos Islands. Their migration and diversification is a literal textbook example of evolution. It was the real-life example that crystallized Darwin's thoughts about evolution into a scientifically tractable hypothesis. The two finch species that are being described in this modern study are the closely related medium and small tree finches, or the Camarhynchus popper and Camarhynchus parvulus, respectively. Now, on the other end of this equation, there's the species of fly known as Philornis downsi, which is not a native to the Galapagos Islands. The fly was introduced some 50 to 60 years ago, and since that time, it's been wreaking its own special brand of havoc on the local ecology. In the case of these tree finches, the flies will get their eggs inside the nostrils of the birds. Inside the nose, the larva will hatch and then reside within the bird's beak, where they eat away at the soft tissue lining the nasal cavity and even the harder keratin. The result of this parasitic consumption is that the inside of the bird's beaks are, to some extent, hollowed out. Their nostrils are enlarged, as the larvae eat away at the nostrils' edges. These enlarged nostrils have a disastrous effect on the finches. Sonia Kleindorfer is a behavioral ecologist from Flinders University in Adelaide, Australia, and she was a lead author of the study. Ms. Kleindorfer described the effect that this parasitism has on the finches, saying, quote, If you have a beak with a gaping hole, you cannot hit the high notes. Unquote. The result of this is that the affected finches have distorted songs. All right, I want you to hear this for yourself. So, this is the sound of a medium tree finch that's normal and healthy. It has an unaltered beak that's undamaged by the infection of fly larva, so the bird song that it makes is healthy and normal. This is what the bird song should sound like. Now, this is the sound of a medium tree finch that has suffered from an infection. This medium tree finch's beak is slightly hollowed out, its nostrils are enlarged, and its bird song is distorted. Do you hear the difference? The altered beak can't hit the high notes, and so it has a lower pitch. Again, here's a healthy medium tree finch. And here is an unhealthy medium tree finch. The scientists focus their research on how this insect-inflicted mutilation affects the bird's ability to attract a mate. That is, after all, a fundamental purpose behind the bird songs. The bird songs are effectively mating calls, and the bird's ability to compose the song with the right notes and the right frequency is the biggest determiner of its reproductive success. The researchers found that the more deformed a bird's beak, the more distorted its song, and the longer it took to attract a mate. Those with the most deformed beaks and the most distorted songs were just outright unable to attract a mate. They failed to reproduce. This failure rate was larger in the subpopulation with deformed beaks, and it was worse for the small tree finches than it was for the medium ones. There's a really interesting twist here. The medium tree finch males with altered beaks made a distorted song but it was only the medium tree finch females who were turned off by it. The male's distorted song actually sounded more like the normal song of the small tree finch, and as a result, the medium tree finch males with altered beaks were incidentally attracting small tree finch females. The best part about this? 
The pairings are producing hybrids, which enjoy a kind of hybrid vigor that makes them less susceptible to fly larva infections and subsequent beak deformation. These larva infections are applying a selective pressure on the small and medium tree finches, but the pressure is not as strong on the hybrid offspring. These evolutionary dynamics give us an insight into the evolutionary future of these tree finches. Assuming this pattern continues, the two species of tree finches will merge into one. The medium and small tree finches will dwindle and disappear, and only their hybrids will remain. This is a fascinating example of evolutionary forces at work, where parasitism and sexual selection are redirecting the river of genes that manifests this particular lineage of biochemical superstructures. Music